Uh, ladies and gentlemen on the line, Milk74. What up, man? What's up, bro? How you doing? I'm doing great, man. I'm doing great. And everybody out there, you can check out his channel, Milk74 TV, on YouTube. I really highly encourage you guys to check it out. Yeah, I want to jump right into it, man. Go way back to the beginning. What's the story about how you ended up getting adopted? Well, I got adopted because uh, my mother, well, the uh, birth mother, she, I guess she was on drugs at the time. And um, she already had a couple of kids. So I guess when they got down to me, uh, when she had me at the hospital, they just took her. I mean, they just took me from her. And um, I got adopted at uh, seven days old. And um, I didn't I didn't go to like a foster home. I was adopted and shit like that. And um, I never seen her. I was like, 26. Hmm. And what was that like when you first met her? I mean, it was it was, it was kind of crazy. Um, I actually met my uh, biological sisters through Facebook, like on Facebook Messenger and shit like that. And when I seen the mother, you know, it wasn't really like I was happy to see her. I wasn't mad, but it was just so like, oh, that's not my mother. My mother, uh, she already dead. That's how I thought about it. Hmm. But it was crazy yeah. because my, my my biological sisters they're mixed with black like their um daddies is black so I want to talk about your neighborhood to the best of your knowledge uh, give me an idea of the beginning of the the Hoover Hoovers um the beginning of the Hoovers you know um from what I was told you know it was like a, just a little group at first and it uh, branched off into something else and it was Hoover Groovers. Um, around 69, it wasn't a crib. It wasn't none of that yet. Um, eventually, it turned crib, and um, as that was shortly the uh, 90 something, I think around 96, it turned criminal. Uh, you know, we one of the most hated areas in LA. That's pretty much, um, pretty much what it is. You know, uh, we beef with everybody in LA pretty much. Like, we don't really get along with nobody, so. Yeah. Talk to me about uh, why I guess the Hoovers uh, ended up being criminal, and then I guess Five Deuce is the only one that went or, or stayed with the crypt card, right? Well, because well, because them they they got allies that are crypt, you know, they, some of their closest friends is crypt, you know, some of their cousins is from Five One Troubles, you know. Um, shout out to TF, man. Um, but the seven falls and, you know, the, uh, the rest of the Hoovers, you know, we beef with every of Crip gang, period. So it's like, why be a Crip if you Crip killing? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And, um, they just didn't want to, they, why would they turn and they already got alliance with some Crips, you know? And it, it's no problem with that. You know, they know what it is at the end of the day. It's Hoover before any of for any of all, any and all of that crit stuff. It was so much Hoover. And how old were you when you first got put on the Hoover? Well, I was young. I was like 16. That's when I was like a fifth week got jumped in. But before that, I was already from it. I was already claiming it. I grew up on 79th. Like my mother that adopted me, her mother owned the house on um, 79th between Fig and Hoover since like 1965 so that was even before the first generation so once that came around we was already over there. so you know like once my mother died that's when it was like you know that's when i was just full-fledged did you have to prove yourself a little bit more being that I mean, yeah, it was more, yeah to be honest with you i, I sit here and lie and say like it wasn't a little harder. Yeah, of course. You know, you're the white person around there. We, uh, some people don't give a f I mean, excuse me, I don't know if I can say but... Oh, you can cut all you want. Care. Yeah, some people don't give a f who you are. I mean, I don't give a f who your people is or whatever. They don't try you. And it's not, it's sometimes it's not like they're just trying to try you to, like, to mark you out. They just want to see where you at, you know? Like, where I come from, it's, 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 it's vicious. You know, they raise, like, vicious people. Not too many people yeah. make it a part of it. Out of that section where I come from. I, I don't come from the 50s, not the 70s. Okay, yeah, I was going to ask you that. What, what, uh, what Hoover said you from specifically? 7-4. Oh, 
That's, that's going to take a road. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I always tell everybody, if you see a group of black dudes and one or two white cats, don't fuck with the white cats. Those dudes had to, <laughs> those are the ones that are about it. They had to prove themselves twice. It's like Eminem. He's a, you know, he's a yeah, good rapper, then, then, but he had to. on top of that, and not because yeah. y'all's on top of that, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's more deadlier because when it's on, if you, if you, if your face known or if people talking about you, there's no way you can avoid nothing. If you block, they, if they don't your face, they can be like, I don't know him. Me, they know who I am. And then I'm out there with orange flags, orange laces, uh, Hoover hats, all that. So it's, you know, like, I was branched out, extra out, frontliner. It was crazy. Explain to me what it was like, or take me back to the day that you actually got jumped in. Um, like, you, you gotta go through a lot of shit. See, me, it was kind of like, I wouldn't say easier, but it wasn't really like what it was supposed to be, you know, because I already knew everybody. I've been, I've been fucking with everybody. Like, I've been playing the shit in the juvenile hall, all that shit. So mine was different, you know, because one day the homies was right there. I was right there. One of them had just got out of jail. He like, hey, bro, you might as well just come, you know, all that shit. And it was just one of them days where I was like, fuck it, come on. And, uh, and it was just on from there. But it was normal. It was regular. But then that's when it just became, like, serious. Like, really serious. Because now you got, now you're a part of something for real, for real. What years were you most active? Um, From anywhere, from anything previous from, like, 2016 on down. From, like, 2006, seven on up to like 2015 was the most the most like the most bullshit the most anything that's when everything happened like before that I already I already had jumped off the porch I remember growing up and the two biggest host roads I was right down the street from one of them one of them was Long Beach Boulevard the other one was Figaro the Figaro yeah. still popping like that I'm, I'm, yeah. as far as the host road yeah, hell yeah. I was Snow White the P off the FIG. <laughs> that shit crazy. Oh, yeah, one of my closest, Yeah, one of my closest homeboys that got murdered right in front of me. You know, he was, he used to be on that shit. Um, that's where I was learning that shit from. He used to be out there, like, uh, so you used to pimp? Remember, uh-huh. You used to pimp? Yeah, I was Snow White the P off the FIG. Okay. Huh. Yeah. Got but it, it was, it was, it was like not long lived. It wasn't because I couldn't do it. I just started like realizing what was going on and what was like, what was everything like with that shit. I got nieces and shit and I can't do it. You know, I got stepdaughter and that just ain't what it is. And then you gotta just think about it like what he's really doing to him. And then you gotta think about if somebody do it to one of your people, how you gonna react. So I know how I'm gonna react. So I just, I cut that nip and I nipped that in the bud real quick. I don't go with game banging like that. You know, like when I grew up, it wasn't, shit changed now, but you know, back then it wasn't like you was game banging and pimping. If you was game banging, you was not pimping. Now it's like, they're doing both. And it's, you can't do both because when you're pimping, you with other people from everywhere. So, you know, it's a lot of shit changed now. Explain us your scary situation where you were like, damn, I can't believe I just made it out of this. Um, the, the time it was uh it was um June 26, 2014. It was like 4:40 uh, p.m. and we was doing the regular um, routine, posting in front of stuff, smoking and shit, um, not causing the havoc, not really doing nothing. And um, we see the car go by. We was like, hey, that was like whoopie whoop. It was like a police officer at the time. He's been a under um uh, a uh, unmarked car and. Uh, like that looked like him and the car turned around and they parked and it wasn't them and um by the time i looked around and told the people that was right there like they're walking up they was already too close and their shit was just fucked up the way it happened because it was like the the police over there play dangerous like it's like they set us up because right before that they came over there and they like circled the block like 10 11 times searched us like two times like two different cars to make sure Nobody had nothing. I could make sure everybody knows it was hot. And that shit happened. And they were they unloaded like seventy times, see. Like the shit was like horrible. 
Seven zero seven. I was one of the intended targets, so it was crazy. Damn, dude. And you yeah, said they brought up the car that looked like the cop car that was roaming around earlier. Yeah, like no, it was his, it was his police. He used to be, uh, um, he was like a regular uniform. You know, he as the he progressed very fast. He turned into a homicide detective. And um, he used to be tripping on shit, like he used to be on shit. So we know his car and we know who he is, so we can avoid it. And that's the only reason we seen that car. It was a Buick. You know, L.A., Buick, Impala's like 25, 2005 in a Buick. That same year is very suspect. When you see them, you uh, instantly, like, alert yourself. So uh, I hate those fucking cars, man. There's another one, too. I can't remember, but it's like a... Crown Victoria or some shit like that. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, drive yeah. those. I'm like, you, you see them? If you got it, you about to pull it out. If not, you about to like scoot back. You know, you might take the chance. It's crazy. He got hit one time, one time, and, and died right there, like in five minutes. It was, it was like damn near uh, a family member. I was with him before he went to prison and when he got out of prison. His his uncle was married, not married, but, you know, like, he was my sister, baby daddy. So we was real close, and I was with him the whole time he got out of prison, and then that shit happened. And, like, you know, like, I don't know, just, you know, like, I've been shot at before, like, that shit was nothing. Like, I've seen people get, but when it's right there, and you were the intended target, too, and you get away, and he tried to, like, follow you and get hit, it's crazy. One time, a guy, like, do you think most gang members, former gang bangers, suffer from PTSD? Yeah, 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 hell yeah. Like, I still be tripping off the situation because you gotta think about right before that, like, uh, 30 days before that, I lost a homie, his baby mama, in a six month old. She was pregnant in a car, so. You know, during that time, it was like, you were already caught with it, and without it. And that day, they pressed me to pick the thing up. You know, they was like, oh, we we'll want you this, that. If they catch you, you're going to the pen and shit. And I'm like, like that, you know, we'll why, why? And, um, they, they, you know, they, they convinced me to pick it up, and that was the wrong, that was the worst decision in my life. And that's what I keep thinking, like, damn, what, why, why? I, I just don't, I don't get it. It was God, probably, I, I don't know what it was, but it was just, it was crazy. Have you ever been to prison? No, nah, I never went to prison, and people think I never went to prison because I never did that. I just never got caught. Like, I've been to the, I've been to the county jail a few times. Like, I've been in all types of bullshit there, too. Like, that shit is crazy. Talk to us what it's like for not just a Hoover walking into jail, but a white Hoover at that. Explain what you had to go through. I mean, oh, it's, oh, it's horrible. It's, it's horrible, bro. Like, so boom, you go in there, you 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 go through process, and then they segregate you. So when they say whites over here, blacks over here, whoop, I, I jump up, I go with the blacks. Police is, is looking at me funny. The sheriff, like, you know what you're doing? You sure? And I'm like, yeah. So boom, you go in there, you got all eyes on you. You feel me? You got certain blacks that's your enemies. You don't know if all of them could be your enemies, you know. Then you got certain ones that's going to push you. Then you got certain ones that's going like, oh, we ain't really looking with him anyway or whatever. But then you got to worry about, like, say I'm from Hoover. I go to the county jail, I probably got 15 enemies that I got to fight. And then on top of that, I got to worry about the woods. Now, the woods ain't really, like, a problem like that in the county. Not like that, but they're a problem. You know, they, they rushed me before and all that. All type of shit. So that's dangerous. And then in the county, people think, so the county is kind of more deadlier out here than prison, kind of, because out here, it, it's no structure in the county jail. You know, you're busting on the black, whoever, it, it don't matter. Like, it, it's dangerous. It's, it's, it's no structure. It's nothing. It's just full of flesh, gangbanging, racial tension. You know, that's it. Do you get approached by any white people like what are you doing walking over there? Yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. But they really can't. They really can't say nothing. So you got the police really saying like, "Oh, you know, you know what you're doing and shit like that." And I'm like, "Yeah, I'm doing what I'm doing." Obviously, I just 
like walking into line. I know what I'm doing. It's crazy because you got the police that try to set you up. You feel me? They know. You really ain't told them you from Hoover, but they know what's up. And uh, they'll put you somewhere. Like, they, they'll put you somewhere where you ain't supposed to be. Scandalous for fuck. They gonna put you where, where six Aryan brothers is at and, and, and six people from neighborhood crib, which is my, like, arch rivals. Yeah, they gonna, they pick you in the, between the rock and the hard place and they want you to, like, go out backwards. But then, you know, you just gotta go in there, like, it's dangerous. You gonna do six man sales. I go in there, six of them people, five of them people probably could be all my enemies. I don't know that. I just gotta go in there and, you know, bang the set and, no. And probably not much sleeping going on, right? Because you're once again watching your back. You probably can't fall asleep. You know, this dude's gonna shank you. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of like the first time in there. It was like my mind was everywhere. You know, I don't know. I don't know if I could trust them just because they fight. Because at the same time, they're my enemies. But I ain't gonna lie. I hit wayside, and um, it was like six or seven woods. And when I went in there, they tried to walk up to me. I'm like, nah, back. I turned my arm out like, nah. And I threw up over and they went, huh? And then like, the black came up and shit. And um, it was like, nah, you good, bro. Don't trip. We just about to make it. Ooh, you know, we we'll in case they trying to get off. But, like, the people that I was around, they never got off. Like, and, you know, I ain't worried about them. Like, they could get off. I'm going to get off right back. But, yeah, it's, it's, it's dangerous. It's, in Wayside, you know, they hitting people in the faces with hot water and baby oil. You got snitched on in Wayside, right? I got snitched on by a legend, a legend homie. Like he was saying, he came in the tank and like Wayside, like this is a place where people come in and come out every day or you might just be in there. So like he came in there and they told me you got a homie down there. And I'm like, who is this? So I go down there and I ain't never seen this guy in my life. And then he tried to play the play like, oh, he's white, I'm black. So I'm really from Hoover, he's not. I'm like, no. Nah. When these dudes can, they can, they, they, like, I'm in there with people that, that know who I am or, or they can make a call. Or, what would I look like going in the county and then saying I'm from Hoover and I'm not and I'm just a, a white boy from fucking Encino? Like, that's a death trap. It's not, but yeah, he told on me, so boom, like, I already got down with two or three people. And, you know, I'm here, we run back phase. So if I got a homie in there, he needs to run my phase right after me. So when he got in there, he tried to get at me, like, hey, you not out with any people. I'm like, what? And the, and, the, and the other dude, he told him, like, yeah, you already fought. Who are you going to fight? And I'm like, yeah, who the f- whatever, you going to fight. So they ended up buying us some fights up before lunch. So he ended up getting whooped. And then he like, oh, I need your face, too. And I'm like, what? Uh, bro, you just got to, like, eat up. And I just stopped eating and then he like, maxed out, like, and uh, trying to fight him and then, we cool, boom, bam. I got his bag, like, his, uh, his food and shit. So, like, I'm going ta- to take it before one of them take it. You understand? Like, I'm not going to let them take it. I'm going to take it. But before count time, you know, they do, like, three counts. The first two counts is whatever. They just count in their bodies. The third count, they want to see your wristband and shit. So when they came in there to do that shit, and they got upstairs, bro, the sheriff walked by him. He kind of gave him a look. When he looked at him, and they looked at him, and they're like, what? And he like, he, like, shook his face. It was crazy. I was trying to show you. He, like, shook his face. And then they looked at him, like, you okay? And he, like, nah. And they, like, got him out of there. And then, like, an hour or something later, we think it was cool. We and they're about to go to sleep, whatever. And um, they come running that motherfucker. Grab four people. Me, um, the other, the other two people he fought, and one more person. And they ended up walking us through a little corridor. And um, every time somebody got right there, it was positive. Positive, <laughs> positive. Then when it got to me, it was positive. And um, basically, he told on us, but he never like really pressed charges or nothing like that. But yeah, he ratted on us. And I ain't never seen him, never heard of him. Um, kind of find out he was like, you know, one of the homies, like long lost cousins. Like out here, you got that bad. Like it'd be somebody's cousin, and they try to like bang that game. And mm-hmm. it don't come out. It, it don't. It don't go out there. You know, like. I ain't got nothing to worry about. You know, I'm on YouTube, I'm on Instagram, I'm on all that shit. And if I was fraudulent, if I was fake, I ain't say I had no flaws, but I ain't got no flaws or none of that. But I'm saying somebody would have been, came at me from out here, bro. Like, these people, it's crazy, bro. It's 
It's crazy. It's a lot of shit yeah. to deal with, though. And then, you know, like me, with the PTSD shit, like, coming from over there, you gotta worry about walking out the yard and getting smoked, or you gotta worry about 12 pulling you over six, seven times a day, harassing you. Tell them they're gonna beat your ass. Then when I move somewhere else, and like a little, more, it costs a little bit more to live over here, it's different, because I see the police sometimes, and I still get nervous, like, shaking, like, I got something, like, and I be like, snap out of it, like, but it's crazy. You don't fuck with people. You don't really go nowhere no more. You don't. It's, you don't trust nobody. Nobody know where you live. Yeah, the shit is crazy. Yeah, which makes your channel even more interesting because you're putting your face out there. That go against. That, you know, that go against everything that I. Uh, you know, that I grew up. It sounds like it. Yeah. It did, but you know, I was like, because why? Why not us? And everybody else doing it, you know, like you got all these other crips that's running the if any any rapper from LA, they yeah. You know, like if they they got their hands in that shit, nobody from that section got it because they too scared to worry about what somebody else gonna say or they don't got nobody that's saying and shit. You know, we don't got old people, older homies that's like on us like do this, do that. Nah, everybody just like kill this, kill that or you know, like it's no it's crazy, bro. It's either gonna make you or break you. Yeah, I think it's a good thing that you're doing. Um, if anything, you could be maybe changing somebody's life. I don't know. Let me ask you all of this. What is what is the mission behind your channel? I know. I would hope that I could stop somebody from doing the shit that I did, or I could. Okay. I could hope that the person that thinks that they was about to try to do this shit is to stop them, because I'm telling them the truth. They're raw shit. Like I ain't seen people. <laughs> like it's it, man it ain't not all it is so, you know it's not all it is I mean it's not it's not as good as it looks you know that's, that's the whole thing I'm just trying to open people's eyes because a lot of people be on YouTube and you would see them but they from like Atlanta and shit or whatever and they're speaking on LA shit and they got a lot of these people fooled and they and they and they saying they from like these games and they just fooling people and they not telling them the truth like I'm just trying to Keep it real, you know, around them a little bit here and there, but, you know, I'm, I'm getting really uh, to the point, you know. I'm getting to the point, you know, you got to get your foot in the door somehow, but that's the whole thing, you know. That's the whole thing. It's not, you got to let them know, because you got a lot of people that really want to gain. And it's like, the why? <laughs> the why? Nobody, and then it's not like it was. It, the generation before me, like, they was, you know, they was, they was hitting snitches, you know, they was looking out when you go to jail, they was, it was, it was more of, it was cold, now it's just like, oh, let's get high, get dressed, and go, um, pimp, and go to a party, like, so, you know, it's, it's shit different.